Folks, it's that time of the week for Jungle Drums. Hey, Loops. Yeah, no shit, man. Long time no see. How the hell have you been? Um, I don't have chat up on the screen because the plugin I used, uh, Molari, which was, you know, I just really liked the uh, the way chat looked on stream. That site is, um, well, the domain is, is dead. And people are online trying to figure out what's actually going on with them. Nobody knows. Um... So, yeah, no uh, no on-screen chat, at least in the stream for now, but I've got, you know, chat up and I can see it as need be. Um, joined this evening by my good friends Gimboid and Sergeant J. Hello. Hola. How are we doing, gentlemen? We all right? Too bit shabby. Sleepy, bit, bit, bit sleepy. <laughs> right, well, this week... Yeah, no, we've been okay. Loops have been okay, just um, doing things, bits and bobs. Um, fun enough. Like collectively, we haven't been gaming that much together. We've been just kind of doing our own things and. I think what I'm saying, actually, to be yeah, honest. Yeah, it, it honestly has. Um, I've just been doing. Oh, I've been busy with school stuff and then website stuff. Just kind of behind the scenes things, doing a bunch of video um, bits and bobs. Um, so no, just like I've had no time to just stream, like as in play games and whatnot. I just, at the moment, I just don't have the time to do that. So it's a bit of a shame, um, but we'll see. We'll try to maybe get back on a, uh, a schedule of some sorts. We will, we'll see, we'll see, maybe, maybe. But one thing is always a constant and that's jungle drums. Even if we can't stream it live, we'll at least, you know, record it offline or something and uh, slap on YouTube and of course on the website scholarlygamers.com so this evening I mean we have to talk about one thing right I mean we're gonna talk about other things but the, the key thing we have to talk about is what what the hell happened this week and that of course was the Xbox One X being launched um, before we get into details of the actual One X um, something that I know affected me and affected you as well Jay um, was, uh, of course, what happened with Amazon. So I've sourced it from Kotaku. Of course, it was everywhere else on the internet as well. Um, but fans were unhappy as some Amazon Xbox One X pre-orders missed launch day. So, yeah, what, what happened? You know, I mean, a lot of folk ordered the Scorpio edition, right? Which went live on August 20th. Scorpio edition was coming in a unique box. It also had, you know, Project Scorpio on the console itself. Came with a controller. That's right there. It says Project Scorpio on it, um, and came with a vertical stand that you can already buy aftermarket ones. But there's been no official word from Microsoft if an official vertical stand will be available to purchase later. But anyway, so the Scorpio was released. You know, available for pre-order early and jay how long did it last it was like really it sold out really quickly didn't it it was uh very quick it was well when it was available i'm pretty sure it's done by the end of the day evening um, yeah i don't think it lasted very long <clears throat> no. um so anyway all these folk had pre-ordered it way back when in august and then sure enough come release day and people were were waiting on it this is specifically talking about amazon people that ordered from other sites um we're getting them on time, but Amazon for some reason uh, just were it was crazy. Even the shipping status wasn't updating correctly. There was no kind of telling what was going on, and it took um, customers like myself ended up emailing them, contacting them, saying, "Hey, what's going on? What's going on?" And um, as it turns out, at least here in the UK, there were stock issues. As in, the supplier didn't actually get the Scorpio Edition consoles to Amazon until Monday. Um, to put things into perspective, I know one of the distribution centers had caught fire last week. Um, and so there was a bit of speculation whether that had affected it or not. Um, another bit of speculation that, what do you guys think of this? I found this quite interesting was, could it have been affected by the amount of people that had pre-ordered and then cancelled you know as far as what was pre-allocated for the different distribution centers I, I don't know if that would actually make a difference or not 
I don't, I don't know, would it? Could be a possibility. You know, I mean, because just imagine, like, say for example, you know, because another thing that happened with the Scorpio edition, it did come back in stock on Amazon on Monday, and I think over the weekend. Um, which, again, people speculated that was due to folk cancelling their pre-order. Um, so you could imagine, what if, say, I don't know, like, somewhere down in Devon or something, there was a certain amount that had to go there, and there was a certain amount that had to go to Scotland and whatnot, and then at the last minute, with people cancelling and new people ordering, maybe it kind of threw off everything? I mean, I don't know, I don't know. Um, regardless of what actually happened, um... Delivery, sure enough, didn't happen on the Tuesday. I didn't get mine till Wednesday. You didn't get yours either till Wednesday, Jay. Is that right? No, I did not, and I'm quite I'm quite lucky actually because um, <clears throat> obviously I'd had my uh, my plan to stay in, and obviously it then got changed. So luckily they let it with my next door neighbour within at the time. So, but yes, no, I did not get mine till I came back from work Wednesday evening. Yeah. No, it was a bit of a a bit of a shambles. I mean, they apologised and. Depending who you were, um, there were different forms of compensation. They gave me, uh, you know, a big apology and a month of Prime, so that was nice of them. Yeah. But then I've read some folk got fifty quid in vouchers. What? Some people got twenty quid. Some people got, got fiver. Did you? Oh, did yeah, you got twenty. You got twenty. Yeah. That's not too bad then. So at least you got something. I mean, I don't even know what the. Jay, you should get on them because uh, twenty is more than Prime. <coughs> Damn, I'm a more loyal customer than this scumbag. <laughs> it's um, it's not good though, is it? That a lot of people did find out via social media. Like I was in quite the, uh, I'd say, fortunate circumstance of I was at work until like half four, and I went out and played like football. So I didn't look at my phone until six, quarter past six in the evening. At which point, obviously, I read through Discord and then actually went and looked at my email that I didn't bother looking at. Um, so in that respect, but yeah, no, it's, it's not, it wasn't really. Mm. I think, way it was handled in a way wasn't great yeah no you're right nobody yeah you can't get a game for 20 quid but what jay could buy is that double pack of the orange oh, rechargeable yes, yes, batteries I did not right think about now <laughs> go to amazon shout. and get them um that is a very good shout hey hey thinking of you buddy thinking of you um no i mean you know at the end of the day a di one day difference of a delay i can live with that but there was a thread going online. Um, I can't even remember the website, but it was just pure gold. The thing went up to like 50-something pages, and it was just people bitching and complaining. There was folk that had got on very.co.uk, right? One of those, uh, you know, places over here in the UK you can buy stuff off. And there had been folk that had ordered it, like, over the weekend, and they got theirs on Tuesday. <laughs> so it seemed to be the Scorpio edition specifically that was affected not just the normal plain Jane Xbox One X. Um, but hey ho. Um, but yeah, the, there was headlines all over the place about Amazon customers in particular being extremely unhappy. Um, but this... Well, see, I've had... I'll tell you what, I've told you guys this before, but in the past I always wanted, you know, like when there was collector's editions of games, I always wanted the physical versions, because all the cool stuff you get with them... Um, like, oh, I can't remember if it was Assassin's Creed 3. Now, yes, regardless of what you think of that game, the collector's edition was really quite cool looking. Um, and I remember I pre-ordered with Amazon, right? Pre-ordered it, and then it comes until right at the last minute, and they go, oh, yeah, we actually, yeah, we don't have stock of that. I was like, shit. And I did it again, I think, with Black Flag. I think I did it again with... Um, Oh, no, I, there's been several games that I've done it time and time again with Amazon UK and each and every time their collector's editions that they offer for pre-order they fall through and they just end up not actually getting them um, so I learnt my lesson and uh, to be fair I mean you know it's no surprise that Amazon had these issues it was just a, it was a nice case that at least with Amazon you could pre-order the Scorpio edition and not have to actually pay for it <laughs> until it shipped yeah I think um <laughs> I think that's where you've got to sort of like weigh up, isn't it? The pros and cons, as you say, with... Because um, Amazon's great for that exact reason of, you know, if, you, if there is something you want to pre-order and you haven't got the cash on hand, it's great. Um, and also some things like the Scorpio, it's just, you know it's going to be going flying out, getting down to a store in time and whatnot. Especially due to, if you look at, like, the release times for those sort of things, it's a nightmare. Um, yeah, yeah. 
I said Amazon usually with normal games are fine. Um, I've never actually tried ordering a sort of collector's edition through them. And I don't think by the sounds of things I ever will um, after the sort of problems you've had. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing, like you say, normal games, I've had no issues. I mean, even with other hardware bits, I mean, most of my computer parts, even so, you know, I'm an affiliate with Overclockers UK, I'll be honest, I buy a lot of stuff on Amazon because it's cheaper and prime delivery. Yeah, prime delivery is fantastic. And I've never Um, had any major issues. Um, But I think think for collectors of decent games and whatnot, you'd probably, well, I say, you're probably better off buying from in the store. But even then, you look at game online they've had a lot of big problems and i don't think it's necessarily been in stores but it, it always seems to be this case of there seems to be a lot of problems that go around uh, and they can't can't keep up with the demand in uh mm. in it it's a shame really oh well shit happens any times yep. i've had pre-ordered problems with a collector's edition was with a uh, game here in the uk <laughs> yeah. and that's when they expected ea to uh let them have copies to sell of uh, the Mass Effect 3 Collector's Edition. Oh, yeah. Without having to pay them beforehand because they were in dire straits of money. <laughs> so that completely fell through and it was uh, a <coughs> that came through for me on that one, yeah. Rest in peace. Oh, uh, well. But yes, despite those issues with Amazon, um, you know, the console itself, now keep in mind, I do not own a 4K display. Um, so I'm, you know, I'm not getting the the full visual eye candy that many are. Although what's quite interesting about that is a lot of people found out shortly after getting their uh, their Xbox One X that their TV didn't fully support it, um, and that's that's because of these different formats. You can get TVs now with Dolby Vision, which the Xbox One X does not support. The Xbox One X supports HDR10, um, so unfortunately. You have to do your homework. Not all 4K TVs are created equally. Um, and that's the unfortunate thing. You can get an affordable 4K display, but a 4K display with a nice, fast response time, high refresh rate, and HDR10, that's a completely different matter. <laughs> There's just a little bit more expensive. Um, so there was, you know, there was a lot of salt on the internet about that. Um, but anyway, regardless, so I don't get the 4K experience, but I am hooked up to 1080 panels. Um, And I'll tell you what, I was really, really quite impressed with setting it up. Um, You know, you just, I had, I use an external hard drive anyway, so my profile was backed up to that. So as soon as it started up, it loaded that, updated what it needed to update, and uh, that was me ready to go. Um, I had to install a few um, high res, well, the 4K content for things like Elder Scrolls Online, Gears of War 4. Um, but I'll tell you what, it was really, even on a 1080 TV and a 1080 monitor, because, you know, uh, depends, sometimes I play in the living room, sometimes I play in the man cave, um, and visuals were stunning. Um, the best way to describe it is, if you're familiar with PC gaming, and you have that one setting that's AA, anti-aliasing, um, it was like you just cranked that up on a game. Uh, Ghost Recon Wildlands... I'm not even sure if this will show up very well. Um, Let me see, I don't think it's closed me out of the game. Yeah, okay, it's, yeah, reconnect the controller. Uh, Ah, the lighting's a bit crap here. And of course, I'm streaming at 720, so you won't get the full kind of eye candy that this offers at the moment, but just the the lack of jaggies, the visual, well, the resolution, it's just so much crisper, so much nicer, and of course, a hell of a lot quicker. So that was one of the first games I checked out was Ghost Recon Wildlands and it was just an amazing difference and that's just on a 1080 panel. Um, Other games, Gears of War 4, same thing. Elder Scrolls Online, I was telling Gim about this, um, I think we were talking when I fired it up Um, and holy crap, huge, huge visual difference again just on a 1080 panel because what the One X does it renders it at 4K and then it downsamples that 4K image to the 1080p panel. And what that does is it's like anti aliasing, it removes the jaggies. Um, so, gaming on a normal TV, well, an HD TV, is still fantastic. Um, now, of course, that's on games that are enhanced, but the games that aren't enhanced, they still look and run great. 
prime example is, I don't know if you guys heard about this, but Witcher 3, mm. right? Witcher 3 is the only game on Xbox One that is coded in such a way that it doesn't have a frame rate cap. So what happens on a normal Xbox One is it just kind of hovers around 30 and then dips yeah. occasionally. But on the One X, it runs at a smooth 60. <laughs> um, so that's a nice little Brucey bonus. And that game hasn't been optimized. It hasn't been you know patched. It hasn't been recoded. And so there's a lot of games that... Future proofed, basically. Yeah, I mean, it's the same. Like, I fired up Destiny 2, which isn't enhanced. And if you've ever played that game, and if you've ever been at a heroic public event with a whole bunch of people around, you know what I'm talking about. The frames just drop. Yep. Um, ridiculously. On the Xbox One X, they don't. And to be fair, a lot of PS4 Pro players say the exact same thing. They don't experience those frame rate drops either. So. The increase in horsepower, yes, it's expensive, but even if you don't have a 4K TV like myself, you know, maybe later down the line after Christmas or something, um, huge difference. I mean, it is, it's, it's very noticeable. It's, again, being a PC gamer, I find it similar to as if I just did a massive upgrade. Like if I'd went out and bought a brand new top of the line video card, um, which of course would be more expensive than that console. Um, but yeah, it's, I'm, I'm quite happy. I know that not everyone shares that opinion. They think it's overpriced. They even ask, what is the point of this console? Um, I really want it. I don't even want to use it for 4K, though. I just want improved performance. Oh, I mean, yeah. It'll, it's worth having for that uh, alone. That, in my opinion. It, yeah, I, and exactly. I mean, if you're, especially if you can offset the cost a little bit by trading in your one or selling it to someone, which, funnily enough, the internet now over here is just riddled with folks selling them on. Um, we're not actually that. My old Xbox One has basically became a now TV, Netflix, Amazon box. <laughs> um, and then the Scorpio is, for the most part, it's just connected to my PC all the time. So that way, you know, there's two Xboxes going on at once. The trick that I used, Jay, was. I've left my old one as the home that set as my home console, so I'm not even signed in on that. But because that's my home yeah. console, then you know um, the missus she has her own gamer tag. Of course, the stepdaughter has a gamer tag, and because um, that's my home console, they get all the benefits and shit. But I don't think you can share games though, unfortunately. Shame. So that's a bit of a shame. But I know because you're going to be doing a dual house setup yourself, won't you? With the the Scorpio at yours and then the one over at hers? Well, that's I think that's eventually what it will come down to. It won't be done for a while. Um, you'll have to get a TV and everything again. Probably use my old one once I get a nice shiny upgrade. Mm -hmm. But I, I will probably be waiting for the new year till that. Um, and I've also got to put the reset to and see if there's anything coming out of this while looking or waiting for. So I think, if I'm correct in remembering, did you not say that it supports FreeSync? Uh, yes, that is correct. It supports AMD FreeSync. Um, for those for those who aren't familiar, in, in the computer world for PC gaming, there's two technologies when it comes to monitors. One is FreeSync, which is the AMD technology. So if you've got an AMD video card, um, it can work with a FreeSync monitor. Um, whereas NVIDIA's side uses what's called G-Sync. Now what happens with these two met uh, methods is it actually syncs up the video card to the monitor physically. So the video card will never produce more frames than is necessary. I mean, yes, you can simulate it by having V-Sync turned on, but all V-Sync does, it means is the um, the monitor won't physically display more than whatever your refresh rate is. Your video card can still physically compute and produce more frames than that, but the screen won't display it. But with FreeSync and G-Sync, what's different is they actually cap the video card. So the there's no wasted performance. And from what I've heard from people that have FreeSync and G-Sync, I unfortunately don't, because um, G-Sync monitors are just a little bit too uh, pricey for my blood. Um, the difference is astounding. I mean, it's just super smooth, nice and silky. Um, so yes, the One X supports FreeSync. So 
if you're buying a monitor, which I know you're most likely going to do, right? You're not going to get a TV. Is no, no, I mean, uh, mainly because obviously if I'm looking at a decent TV, I might as well be getting a big one. And to be fair, yeah. I, with how close I'm sitting, it's probably not wise. No, no I'll probably be looking right. at between a 27 to potentially 32 max. Um, I, I said some of the Asus uh, ones look quite nice, but again, this when I come close to the time, I'll do some proper research as well. Yeah, I mean that's the thing. You're gonna be if you can get one that has free sync because they are cheaper than the G Sync ones. You know, puts yeah. you in a better position. And then what we've also learned about the One X is that it's gonna support 1440p, um, and that's gonna be quite interesting because if the machine can do. 60 frames at 4k in some games remember not it doesn't do it in all of them and that's not the hardware's fault allegedly that's up to the game devs to enable the uh, the higher frames allegedly uh take that with a, a pinch of salt but um there is word that if you plug it into a 1440 monitor i don't think yet but they're gonna put it in um it will you know display natively at 1440 whether or not it goes over 60 frames, I don't know. That's gonna what's going to be interesting. You know, if it's if you can hook it up to a 1440p, which, to put that in kind of layman's terms, is 2K, right? You know, we talk about 4K, but 1440p is the equivalent of 2K. Um, if it can do that with like 100 frames or something, that would be pretty tasty. Which. Again, if you try to if you compare it to like PC scaling, a PC that's capable of 4K 60 frames could do 1440p, you know, somewhere over 100. You would think, usually. So, but we'll see. We'll just see how it works out. We will. But no, it's nice to know, you know, that you don't um, need all that tech. I mean, like as Gim said, he wants to get one, but has no desire or plans to get a 4K uh, TV in the near future. You know, there's all sorts of reasons all sorts of reasons um speaking of reasons actually what do you guys think of this right they've been if anyone's kind of been involved in these kind of console wars on the internet or even just as a bystander spectating and watching you know the sony crowd and the xbox crowd are constantly throwing shade at each other and one of the things that i see a lot of times that is always thrown in the face of Xbox users is games. I mean, I think if we're blatantly honest, Sony's kind of been doing really well in that regard when it comes to console exclusives and some like, you know, really big killer AAA titles that um, get preferential treatment on the PlayStation. Um, you know, so it's always, I think, a fair argument to bring up, but it's constantly thrown in the face of the Xboxers out there. Um, so I've got an interesting little article here from Ars Technica uh, UK, and um, it's saying that Microsoft will have game streaming within three years as focus shifts to software. So this is quite interesting. Uh, basically it's saying that after years of decline, Microsoft plans to invest in first party game development. They feel that, you know, again, maybe this is slight speculation, but with the One X that has came has been released the hardware question is resolved allegedly right this article states in microsoft's favor um and so it's very powerful it'll last for quite a while we would think and so that problem is done and dusted but phil spencer kind of recognizes that well look we need to go back to our try to focus more first party titles because i mean if we're honest there hasn't really there's not really that many kicking about at the moment Right? I mean, look, what do we have right now? What were the big ones this year? Forza 7? Um, I only, yeah, to, be, to be fair, as bad as it sounds, that's the only... Well, obviously they've had the Halo series, haven't they? But yeah. That's, that's not been... Cuphead, but then... Yeah. You know, the, the argument too is, I mean, with some of these, yeah, it's plat... You can get them on PC as well. Um, so they're not, like, solely just on Xbox, but then again... There's quite a lot of PlayStation games that are very similar, but there's also a PC release. Um, you mentioned the PC release, yeah, that's, a, that's where Xbox's uh, exclusives are going, because Microsoft also want in on that PC market mm -hmm. with Windows and everything, so uh, the console loses out on exclusives, whereas Sony doesn't really have that investment on PC. Yeah. And very few of their exclusive games, inverted commas, are actually uh, 
you go to the PC. Yeah, you no, you're absolutely right. right. Cause, I mean, I think that's one of the things is that Horizon Zero Dawn isn't and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, things. Um, I think that's because of the damn. You know, it requires a uh, being ported. Whereas it looks like on the Microsoft side of things, there's not architecturally there's not much difference between a an Xbox standard, One. It's standardized between Xbox One and Windows 10, basically. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's almost, quite... I'm, I'm not a dev, so don't. don't <laughs> this bit seems just uh, very easily transferable. Mm -hmm. Now it's quite interesting. So, so Spencer's basically saying that they're going to try to focus now, uh, or will increase their investment in first-party titles. They're going to create new studios, which is nice to hear after some really awesome studios basically getting shut down this year. Um, <laughs> EA, just destroy, destroy studios. No. Um, and acquiring existing studios to write Xbox no. games. Um, but that's not the only thing in the cards, allegedly. There's going to be a richer set of services are planned. Um, now, one of the things we know about that was rumored ages ago but wasn't implemented on launch is they were talking about utilizing more cloud stuff for games. Because you look on the 1X, right? And some of these games are over 100 gigabytes, you know, big. And they were talking about trying to do some type of, you know, on demand resource thing in the cloud, but that hasn't quite manifested yet. Um, but what they are saying in the next three years, they plan on having a game streaming service. Um, so that's interesting. Remember, this isn't Game Pass. Isn't that Game Pass? Isn't game streaming, right? Game Pass is like a a rental almost type yeah, thing, so where you can download them service. and temporarily have them. We're talking about actual game streaming, where it's it's not actually physically on your hard drive. No doubt, some assets would be. Um, oh, they'd have to be. They, they, yeah, they'd have to be. Um, but it's quite interesting. I mean, because Microsoft had tried to buy the cloud gaming service on live. Um, and according to this article, they had internally tested a cloud streamed version of Halo 4. But cost and quality concerns had prevented them from releasing such a service. But you fast forward to today and with all of these crazy, um, I mean, the cloud is where it's at. You look at Amazon Web Services, you look at Microsoft Azure. Um, isn't Red Hat another one, I think? On Linux, or is that, am I thinking? No, that's server shit, isn't it? Um, anyway, cloud computing is where it's at. I mean, I'm doing a module on it at school this year, and it is, it's just really, really amazing because there's data centers all over the world. Um, so this kind of concept of having cloud computing to stream games, um, I think it's reasonable. Um, Again, given how big Microsoft Azure is now, they have the resources for it. Um, because on the PC world, it's getting, it's starting to get a bit more popular. Because there you are, you could have a PC that isn't gaming capable, but by using a game streaming service, you know, it's basically somewhere else is doing all the, the power for you. Like, you know, all the processing power, the graphical power. And you're just getting the game displayed on your computer. This is where it kind of gets me, guys. Is where game streaming service? How is that a benefit to us in a console, though? Like, especially if the One X is already super powerful and stuff. Why am I missing a trick here? What's the importance of a game streaming service? I do. I do not know the answer to that. <laughs> well, they did ship the. Uh original Xbox ones with only 500 gigabyte hard drives. I could fit a handful of games in that hard drive with Wix mm -hmm. Well, it's, uh... Well, I mean, look now with the One X. Yeah, it's doubled yeah. in size, but so have the games, if not more. So, it's still a huge issue. So, yeah, no, I think you're right, Gim. I think that's probably what it is. Because I think now with, you know, I know me and Jay, we use externals, so we don't feel that um, yeah. Pinch too much, but from what I've read, with the One X, if you download and install just enhanced titles with the 4K assets, I think it fits what six games at best. Four? <laughs> was it five? Good amount then. Well, yeah, it was something. It was. It wasn't. It's not enough. <laughs> it was around half a dozen games, and um, you know, if I spent 450 quid 
on a system that was I could only choose between five games. I, yeah, I think I'd be a bit pissed off. I can. Yeah. Uh, it's not not great. I spend half your life downloading different games where you want to play a different game. Oh Jesus, even that! Can you imagine? I mean, there you are, and if you've got like not that great internet, you've got internet that's good enough to game on, but you know that's about it. And having to install a game that's a hundred gigabytes. Oh Jesus. It'd be a yeah. for quite some time. Sitting there for quite some time. But now it'll be interesting to see what they do. Um because I think it's nice to see that Microsoft has actually acknowledged that they've kind of dropped the ball in regards to games. Because I mean you guys have seen it too, surely. That's always the argument in these console wars. Oh, Sony has the games. We've got the games. Yeah. Well, the argument was they had the power, more powerful system as well. Even though it was only slightly more powerful. True. It became a bit more pro, but now it's behind it. No, it just seems to be some doubling down on the whole. We've got the games, though. To be fair, they've got some really good ones that I want to play and I can't. Speaking of hardware, yeah. again, since you bring it up, I mean, what does this do to Sony now? What? Because the One X has came out. Now we know the PS5 is rumored. We know that, but I think it was it was in proper development. Sony would have also mentioned it by now. Just as sort of a counterplay to the One X. But that's how Sony works. Mm -hmm. That's why their conference is always after Microsoft's E3. E <laughs> so they can react. Remember when um, the Xbox One was originally announced? And it had all that horrible sort of DRM sort of stuff to stop you from trading games. Mm, mm -hmm. They hastily recorded a video saying, this is how you trade games on PS4. And it's just <laughs> one guy handing a game to another guy. <laughs> just, they, they know how to do that. Mm -hmm. they, I mean, suppose what the... I'm assuming we can... We can say that most likely the <laughs> PS5 will have more horsepower than the One X. Right? I mean, it has to. They can. It has to. That'd be a whole new generation if it doesn't. Because that's the thing. Is the One X... The One X, do we consider this a new gen? Or just a... It's an like upgrade? A I'm half tempted to say yes. But... It's hard to kind of say. Because it is... The new gen implies, like, um... No sort of like backwards compatibility. Unless they patch it in or just... Specifically include it in. Uh, yes. Thing that comes out on Xbox One X that can't be found. Like, yeah, I know. I get what you're saying. On Xbox One. Because yeah, like a new generation usually involves new architecture, and you need different games. I mean, that's why like like a PS4 Pro isn't a new generation. It was just you know a turbocharged PS4 that was capable of 4K. Yes, we know some of the stuff's not true 4K and it's checkerboarded, but hey, it doesn't matter. You know, it's 4K. And then on the Xbox side, they did something similar with the One S, because people forget that the One S hooks up to a 4K display, right? It does 4K HDR, Amazon, Netflix, all that crap. But games, they're not rendered at 4K, but they're displayed at 4K. Um, allegedly, they don't look that bad either. So, you know, we kind of had that, but the Pro obviously did a much better job because it was rendering some games at 4K. Um, but then the One X, I don't think it's a new generation because, it's like you say, it's just a turbocharged one with, I mean, more, you know what I mean? Like, it, it's not, yes, there's a lot of differences with the hardware, but as far as the platform goes, it's still the same platform. Was I feel that same way with the Pro. The Pro's not a, genera a new generation. It's just an upgrade of the old. And I think what's weird, though, Jay, is because this is a new thing for us. We're not used to this. You know, the, the closest that we've ever had to this was like the, um, look at the Sega Mega Drive. And then you could get the Sega CD. And then later on you could get the 32X. You know, where it was basically, like the 32X was a new platform, so to speak. But all it was doing was upgrading the Mega Drive. You know, it was weird. Um... Are we hitting the point though where necessarily we're not going to be seeing consoles released the same way they used to be? Um, 
we potentially not looking at I want to say almost generations but this iterative sort of that makes sense um, focus on it because I mean you look at all this backwards compatibility for example with games um, and they're very much so pretty heavy on this now um, mm-hmm. I think if you look at from what I've heard or read or I think it's read somewhere the Xbox One X obviously they have even better performance to old Xbox 360 titles yes um, excuse me yes which shows that they do care about backwards compatibility so as, as, as silly as this almost sounds like as you say when new consoles get released you kind of get this whole brand new set of games don't you so obviously mm-hmm. you had the free, you had the Xbox games you had the 360 games then you got the Xbox One games um Likewise, PlayStation, PlayStation, PlayStation 2, PlayStation 3. But now, backwards compatibility is definitely... I mean, it was there. But it seems like it's much more of a bigger focus now. So, I mean, are they going to be not looking at really releasing consoles? As in, like, oh, here's the Xbox 2, for example, or the PS5. It's going to have PS5 exclusive games. Or do you think mm. they'll just do it as an iterative upgrade on the system? This is the thing. I mean, I think when you look in the PC world, and I mean, because I was having a few online conversations about this, and... Like, pretty much everyone considers Moore's Law to be dead. Because yeah. before there was that model of how things upgraded this, that, and this. You fast forward to today, and, okay, depending on memory, depending on video card, blah, 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 blah. You could take a first-generation i7 and game on that. Quite, like, game well on it. If you team it up with a 1080, there's a slight bottleneck in the processor, but not by much. And... I mean, that's crazy, because we're now on 8th gen Intel processors. But a 1st gen i7 is still capable, you know, today, as far as when it comes to modern games. So in the PC world, we're seeing this. Now, don't get me wrong, yeah, video cards, different kettle of fish. They're constantly going up. But even then, you look at the 10th gens, uh, like the NVIDIA 1080. Um, We'll leave the TI out for now, but... A 1080 was only a few performance points over the 9 series. You know, their flagship, the 980 Ti. And then we're getting to this weird point where the technology isn't like leaps and bounds. You go back years ago and the NES. Compare a a normal Nintendo to a Super Nintendo, right? Huge. Night and day difference. Yep. Then compare a Super Nintendo to a Nintendo 64. Once again, holy crap. And then so on and so forth, because at the time, that's the way technology was. Look at the PlayStation. Original PlayStation, CD, that was the technology at that time. PS2 comes out, it has a DVD. You know, it made sense. You needed that new platform because it was a new media. Clean. PS3, PS3s were the first ones to come with Blu-rays, right? Or was it not until PS4? I actually... PS3, because uh, Sony were pushing the... Three, yeah. That's right. It was their uh, format, so they were pushing it yeah. through the PlayStation. Yeah. So it'd yeah. be HD DVD because Microsoft didn't support it properly. Exactly, because yeah, because we had for a while on the 360, you could buy the HD DVD player. Yes, I had one of those. <laughs> <laughs> and I barely you used the thing. Films. Um, and then you never watch five films on it now. <laughs> five films. But. It's, and it's as you said, though, isn't it? It's hitting that point now where it's coming to... It's well, slowing down. What more do you... You know, until they come out with... Because at the moment, right, this is why I think, for me, the One X and the PS4 Pro make sense, kind of, because there is a new Blu-ray format, right? The new UHD, the 4K Blu-rays, you can't put those in a normal Blu-ray player. Yeah. Right? And don't get me started in that conversation. Have you looked at the prices of what 4K Blu-ray players are? No, but I don't think I really want to look. Because I remember how much I'm pretty sure normal Blu-ray players were when they first came out. Well, they're not cheap. you know. So that's another thing to keep in mind yeah. with these new consoles. Um, but anyway, so that kind of makes sense. But, but it's like you say, what is there a need? What's going to happen? Unless we get rid of, you know discs all together, which I think, to be fair, there's maybe a good chance the next generation, or maybe not the next, but the, uh, because next would be the ninth generation of consoles, I believe. Um, But you've also got to look at, I know they say everybody has internet access and all this, but... There's people that that don't. Is that a wise move? 
Um, I can understand, again, this whole entire cloud gaming aspect, which is a really, to be fair, a good idea. And as you say, cloud computing has moved leaps and bounds recently, mm -hmm. um, especially like, say, Microsoft Azure and all this sort of stuff. Um, but is that a wise move from consoles? But to be fair, as you say, that is kind of what you would look at as being the next step. Well, it could be. I mean, maybe not soon, but maybe 10th or 11th gen. Can you imagine eventually having a console that actually doesn't have a disk drive of any kind, right? All it has is USBs, so you can put USB sticks into it. And then doesn't have local storage or something. Everything's done in the cloud. Um, who knows? Maybe that could be a thing. I suppose there's a lot more problems, but we don't need to go into at the moment. Um, but yeah, but that's, no, as you I, say, though, it's just it's only so far they can go now. Um, well, again, that's that's the way I feel with the One X. I think yeah. that the One X, from the Microsoft point of view, I don't think they would be in any rush to create no. something bigger, faster, whatever. And the thing is, I don't think they need to be anyway, because obviously, yeah, you've got the PS4 Pro out. But if PlayStation are going to kind of react to this, it's going to be a while, unless they've already got in the pipeline. But we haven't heard anything, so that's not a strong possibility. I mean, it's a possibility, don't get me wrong, but it's not strong. Which means, again, you say Microsoft haven't really got any need to sort of rush around. I mean, you could potentially look at that time of focusing on what Xbox does suffer, which is, as we've said before, is the titles. Mm. I mean, I won't deny the fact PlayStation have got some pretty damn good exclusives, and there's a reason why I've got a PlayStation. And it is for that reason, yeah. is to uh, get exclusives on, um, to play some games I can't get hold of. But, but I, obviously, I picked up the uh, Last of Us Remastered, or whatever, and that was amazing. Oh, and, you nice. know, mm -hmm. he's got us guide on his that because I didn't have a PlayStation. But yeah. I think, and I suppose as well, you could look at it from the point of if the Xbox have got this out, <laughs> and I would say almost, I'd say the competition is still there, but maybe as Intel, of, we're using Intel. And AMD here is, is Intel have sort of been able to, as you know, almost like sort of they haven't been forced to bring out heavy stuff. Could Xbox fall back on like R and D and stuff like that um, mm -hmm. with this time? Because as you said, I mean, how without coming to the point of hitting like PC spec level consoles, which will be expensive, where can they realistically go now? Yeah, yeah. I as mean, you like say, you say, is there is there a need? I mean, are we kind of stuck now with? I mean, you look at 4K, for example. 4K still isn't the the norm in most households, no. or especially for PC gamers. 4K yeah. isn't even the norm for them. So, you know, until that becomes the norm, then you know, then we can look at moving on. Because you look in the world, in the PC world, right? 4K, yes, enthusiast level, but they're already working on 8K panels, right? Yes, we don't really have video cards aside from the professional series ones that can manage that, but that's not even from a gaming point of view. Gaming at 8K and 16K, as Linus Tech Tips did a couple of months ago, you know, it's just not reasonable at this point in time. So I, I think that, like you say, that generation of consoles, 4K is a long way away from being yeah. the norm. And yes. I don't think we need another console jump until we're going to something different. I, th I think with this, what's quite interesting is both Sony and Microsoft have now almost pushed it out to the developers of games because where developers were constricted to this, you know, pretend, obviously it's consoles and they have like sort of FPS cap, you know, HD only. Now suddenly developers can start pushing out these patches for 4K games. Um, these yeah. new titles can be looking at focusing very heavily on that. And again, what the Xbox One does, which is nice, um, is obviously you can choose to download these 4K packs. So developers can even put them in and know that they can still design the game for obviously lower console power, but for these for the Xbox One X and obviously the PS4 Pro does it as well for that. And see, I think I think a lot of the focus has now been shifted on them to almost show what these consoles can do um, as such, which again is nice because it's good for obviously us gamers, you know, we get some nice shiny new stuff. Um, it'll be interesting to see what people, what developers can bring out, especially with the higher computational powers as well of these uh, consoles. Um, you know, they can they can afford to do more powerful stuff as such, which will be again be interesting what they do. Um, again, just like Destiny, for example, obviously the fact now we don't get frame rate stutter just shows you that they were 
uh, they'd obviously build these games, but you know, and necessarily taken into account for that. Mm -hmm. uh, whereas now they sort of can, um, you know, it gives them more power to do stuff with that makes sense. So again, it's quite nice to it'd be interested to see what games can come out for these consoles now and in the near future, and what games are currently in production. So I'm going to use for a name I hear of Anthem. Yeah. Um, if they've already accounted for this and if so how i mean you saw how stunning that looked anyway from the reveal for it and how much more stunning will that look um and joe's just disappeared um <laughs> yeah so be interesting yeah no i, I said it will be interesting i don't know if we're gonna you know i mean i've seen a few articles kicking about saying that you know like ubisoft said oh the the next consoles from microsoft and playstation are about two years away and i mean i just i just don't know we'll we'll see we'll see what the hell I happens i mean it will i mean with anything like this we can just fiddle our thumbs and wait <laughs> yeah you know because I, I do think i just think like the ps4 pro was an attempt to bring 4k gaming into the living room and it does do that you know yeah and and, and hats off to them that's great and then Microsoft kind of did it with the One S, but it wasn't, you know, it wasn't actually yeah. 4K gaming. It was just being upscaled. Um, and then so they've came out with the One X, so now like, okay, look, yes, we're the kings of 4K. Um, and it just makes me wonder, well, okay, what would a, what would a PS5 be? What would a PS5 do? You know, what are we yeah. talking about? Is there's the whole VR thing as well, Jay. Like, yeah, so exactly. Microsoft's been very quiet about it, but they have said in tiny little interviews here and there that, yes, augmented reality slash virtual reality is coming to the One X. Um, how that's going to be implemented and how it's going to be, it'll be interesting to see because, especially since they discontinued the Kinect. Um, so I don't, I, I don't know I think, um... what they'll do. No, it'll be interesting, won't it? I think, just on a side note with the consoles, with the Xbox One X, you almost kind of feel that, I don't say for once, but you can almost warrant spending the money on it because of what it is bringing to you. Yeah, I mean, for me, for me, I can, right? I just, in my opinion, um, you know, yeah, okay, I've got a gaming PC, and I, if I really want super fast frame rates and stuff that's fine i can just buy games on this but when i think of the investment this is what i view the one x as as an, as an investment yep because right now it's playing what games i have really quickly i mean even like i know i've seen different views on this when it comes to loading times a lot of reviewers are saying oh no it's only a couple of seconds here and there but for whatever reason i just it feels snappier to me it feels like like even Destiny 2, I'm not in orbit or like wait, flying into a planet as long as I was before. Yeah. Um, so right now I'm getting an immediate benefit, but then later down the line, when we buy a 4K TV, I think this is gonna be awesome because yep. we'll have Amazon and Netflix in 4K. We've got oh, yeah. a 4K Blu-ray player. So, you know, for those times that you want to buy, cause let's be honest, it's cool streaming at 4K, but a physical disc is going to give you even better image quality compared to the streaming well, services. Well, I say stream, streaming 4K is a very, very heavy hitter. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Isn't it? Uh, um, I mean, I a lot. But, you know, and I look at that as, yeah, that TV is going to be, you know, almost a grand or something by the time we get it. Yeah. But compared to what I would have to spend on this PC to get 4K gaming at 60 frames per second, it's a no-brainer. That's, the Scorpio has been a hell of a lot cheaper. You know, I mean, we're talking yeah. about the video cards you'd have to get. I mean, I'll tell you before, I've got a, a classmate who has a, a 6 Gen i7, um, a 1080 Ti, 64 gigabytes of uh, Corsair Vengeance RAM. You know, he's got it water-cooled, just with a, a Corsair, like, all-in-one unit. But, you know, yeah. he's got a few thousand tied up in his PC. And even with him, to play Grand Theft Auto V at 4K, it's running at, like, 40-something frames per second. If he wants to hit 60, he has to turn settings down. 
Now, how would you feel <laughs> if you spend all that money and then find out that, oh, actually, if I want to hit 60 frames at 4K, I need to spend another 800 quid so I can have these video cards in SLI. Yeah, it'd be pretty gutting, wouldn't it, really? Um... Yeah. Whereas compared to 450 quid... Now, yes, I know you've got to buy a TV and shit, but it's the same with a PC. You have to buy 4K yeah. monitors. 450 quid for the console versus keeping in mind you already have a badass computer but you have to spend an additional yeah. 800 just for that second video it's again i just well, think it's an investment because I, I wouldn't be able to experience or afford 4k gaming on a pc i'm a couldn't i'm in the same sort of boat as you um in terms of as well as we both were we were both like ah, you know is it really worthwhile buying the x did we hold off and obviously we both again got sold by the scorpio edition because we're suckers like that but it is it's made up into console that i actually do think you know it's worth it you know oh it's so nice um oh, of course green screen won't actually show up <laughs> i've got um obviously i'll go away for the tv but as you've already said it improves the games anyway you know it's, it's already a slight upgrading without that tv or monitor in this case for me uh, and again i do see it for me probably having that for quite a while unless suddenly xbox and playstation suddenly go here's these new nice shiny things which as we said earlier we don't know how likely that is um but yeah definitely i definitely see it as i could war warrant in my money spending on it you know i got mm. to justify it a lot pretty well actually um for me wanting to buy it gim what do you think about um i know it'll probably take a while but how far down in price do you think the scorpio might um come down do you know what I mean? Like, I don't think there'll be a discount at Christmas or whatever, but I mean... It might be soon after. I've got to say, it could be that soon. I mean, what do you think? Are we talking like a 50 quid reduction? Are we talking more? I mean... I think the first price drop would be fairly low, like 25, 30 quid at most. But... Okay. Or maybe... Months, it'll drop. You might even drop as much as a... Hundred. <laughs> I'm trying to think. Haven't they done it in the past where they don't drop the price, but instead they increase what comes in the box? Where like for the same price, and you get like two games bundled or something. Uh, I think they they do that anyway, but they, okay. the the console price drops also still happen because, quite frankly, uh. You're paying extra to get it early, pretty much. It is a uh, yeah. interesting question for you two. Uh-oh. Um, obviously, we talk about the fact that it's found like they're going to release new consoles and whatnot. What is the likelihood in time-wise, do you think, of them releasing another X with a bigger hard drive, internal like, hard drive? The likelihood, because didn't they do it with the Xbox Ones anyway, where they yeah. got the terabyte out? Do you think that's likely to happen with like a, a double increase in uh, size to two? Do we think that's something they'd make a move on, or do we think they'd potentially even make their own version of an external? On one hand, I think that. I think that it makes sense to have a bigger hard drive, but they know that they would piss off so many people, possibly. Yeah. Um, so I'm kind of steering towards that. I'm thinking they might... Because they you can already get Xbox licensed ones, because you'll see Major Nelson tweeting about certain... I'm sure Seagate is partnered with Microsoft or something. Um, and yeah, so they've so got like officially branded... Seagate stuff. Yeah, they've got officially Xbox branded external hard drives. Um, so yeah, no, I think... I know what you're saying. I think... Uh, you're getting me on the bloody fence with this, but no, I'm going to stick to my guns. No, they will not. They're going to they're gonna focus on external because... Yeah. To make it worth your while, even going up to... If they double the size of the internal, then, oh, cool, you get another half dozen games? Yeah. So, no. I think the thing that's got me now is that I had a two terabyte external thinking that was fine. But now, looking at the damn way that the One X is, um, I might actually have to consider getting that even friggin' bigger. See, I think mine's five terabytes. I think I sort of preempted something. Yes. Yeah, I'd need a big external. Um, Gim, so got... Gim has found. Um, so this is the Seagate, 
This is a two terabyte one, one from Maplin. Oh, let's zoom in a little bit. A bit pricey for uh, what it is, really. So it is actually. It cheaper, oh, wow. Yeah. That's the first branded. result when you search for it. Boom. Seagate branded. Xbox Even in the pop sort of Xbox branded box as well. Yep. Now, that's a, is that solid state as well? Or is I that... didn't pay that much attention. I just did a quick Google. If it is, it'll probably be worth the money. <laughs> But I don't think it is. Though. I don't think it would be though. Well, because I'm I'm assuming it is because it doesn't need external power. Because it's compact sized. Mm. That's specification. We've got to have a look at this. I'll be one of the first things they'd say though if it was. Such yeah. A yeah. Usually that's quite yeah, an selling point. Right. With being the sort of header for it. You'd uh, expect. I think it doesn't need external power because it's USB 3.0. True. True. Yeah, power for it. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Power. Here we go. <laughs> I found the important stats. This is what is the bad stuff. It's only a 5400 RPM. Oh, that's why I wouldn't buy the branded ones. How? Better yeah. ones, similar price. Yeah. Elsewhere. Not branded with higher speeds. Because this is the thing. Like on a on an Xbox One, like a normal one, that would probably be okay. Because even so, it's only a 5400. Because it's USB three, it's an upgrade. But on the One X, yeah, the internal, I'm pretty sure, is a seventy two. I think. I think pretty sure. So my external is I use as well. It's yeah, just... my my external seventy two. But I think the internal on the One X is. 70, I can't remember if they upped it. Um, so for like normal Xbox, it's probably fine. But for the X. Oh yeah, yeah. The one yeah was just a fifty four hundred. Yeah. Absolutely. But no, but yeah, so, I don't know, we'll see. We'll see. I just, I would like the option to be able to install my own. I would love to be able to, you know, just actually put an SSD in there. And I know that there's folk, it's debatable whether it's that much of a performance difference on the uh, the one and one X, but I don't know. It would, it would kind of be nice, wouldn't it, to be It'd able be to cool. put your own sort of, uh, <laughs> like that in. Speaking I mean, of what, I'll tell you what is cool. Have you seen, okay, you know how they've got the, like I've got an M2 SSD, the one that looks like a stick of RAM? Yeah, yeah. Right? You can get external closures for those and it turns it into like like a, a thumb drive. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> so you can imagine getting like a brand new, like a huge big ass Samsung 960 Pro, however many terabytes, getting the external, like the case for it and just plug that into your Xbox. <laughs> yeah. That would be uh that'd be pretty dope. That'd be pretty dope. But no, yeah, I, that's what I think. That's what I think. But Gim, what about yourself? Mm, not really put much form into it in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> I mean I can I can see them doing that. You know, like going, Oh yes, look, now we've got the the big bundle or the you know, a bigger hard drive, because it is honestly a problem. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm glad that they upped it to a terabyte because you imagine if I'm, it had 500 gig I mean, I'm still kind of it's almost you're almost a bit surprised though still by it, aren't you that Microsoft and Sony in all fairness are still putting in I mean they're big hard drives when you think about it logically they're huge but they're, they're not that big though and again you know they're doubling it as we've said but yeah you throw in the 4k texture packs and Realistically, it's just another 500 gig Xbox. Well, probably yeah, less. Even, there's that extra space for yeah. that, those texture packs and those 4K. Um, got the word for it now. You get point. Um, assets, sorry, 4K assets and everything. So I'm I'm still surprised that they are releasing consoles with what I would see as a small hard drive nowadays. Um, but again, I suppose you do look at how much would more of that bump the price up. And um, it would, I mean, this is the problem that exactly. currently hardware and all that stuff, it's all mucked up. I mean, you look at, yeah. Um, okay, yeah, I've got an SSD for my operating system, but I do have a mechanical for my storage. And I want I, st I want to get another one because um, I've got a Western Digital Black uh, hard drive um, and I want to buy an additional identical one. I've had that hard drive for a year and a half, maybe two years almost. I've still got it on my Amazon wish list. It's more expensive to buy it now than it was back then. The same drive, not an updated version. 
the same drive and it's the same with memory memory's doubled the price of what it was a year ago and i think that's why we end up getting s snookered <laughs> in these situations yep. is they'd love to put a bigger faster hard drive in but even they have to you know source them from somewhere else and i mean maybe you know gim was there isn't it wasn't a case of like they're losing money on the one x initially or something or is that just something I've pulled um, out of my arse? I'm not sure for certain, but it's not unheard of for console manufacturers to sell at a loss. Mm -hmm. Make the money back on the <laughs> software instead. Oh, so well. that's what the uh, 360 originally done. Every console was sold at a loss, but they made money hand over fist on software. Well, it's about that time, but I have to get this one last bit of news out. I just have to, because... This is what I think it is. It's just it's so amazing and awesome. Um, right, I sourced this on WCCF Tech, but hey, look, you, there's announcements all over the, the internet, and even today I watched there was two streamers that were gifted these um, and opened them up live on stream. Um and this, of course, is NVIDIA's new Titan XP Collector's Edition is a Star Wars collectible with Galactic Empire and Jedi Order flavors. So I'm just going to very briefly just scroll through here so you can see some of these images. There is a video, but look, just search it on YouTube. You'll find it. Um, they've done some really nice touches here. So the Galactic Empire version has a black and red aesthetic and as you can see it has the actual symbol on the blower style fan imperial logo yeah. um yeah yeah sorry um aesthetically it looks amazing you can see it actually almost looks uh there's some aesthetics that kind of take away from a lightsaber if we get over to it like from the top somewhat similar um of course the red glow to it it's just says actually on the top on the spine there galactic empire absolutely fantastic looking card and then the jedi order version as you can see is gone with a kind of a metallic um actually looks like you know like proper metal it's not just a gray color it actually kind of has that dry brush effect to it with a green aesthetic where you know it almost looks like lightsaber um energy coming through um but oh my god the, these are just they're beautiful um t t titan xps are technically better than a 1080 ti they've got more cuda cores um they also have a higher um memory bandwidth a 1080 ti has 352 bit memory interface whereas a titan x and titan xp have 384 they also have one more gigabyte of ram well ram video memory than a 1080 ti um there's a lot of things going for an xp um to put it really really quickly and shortly an xp is a weird card that sits somewhere between a gaming card and a professional card um obviously the professional cards are better for things like um cad and 3d rendering and whatnot and so the xp is an enthusiast card that is targeted at yes people who first of all want to brag that they have the fastest video card the gaming video card available but it also gives you enough computing power um to do things like rendering um like when you look at those things like cinebench scores between a, an xp and a ti are, are quite significant um but so is the price. <laughs> a Titan XP, keep in mind, in the States, a 1080 Ti is about $700. A Titan XP is $1,200. Um, so they're not for the faint of heart. Not for the faint of heart at all. But just the the Star Wars aesthetic. I mean, what do you guys think of that? They're, they're almost so pretty, you don't want to put them in your PC. Yeah. <laughs> like, you just put some external power running through them and just put them up somewhere in a nice little glass case <laughs> well did you have you seen the display case they came in yeah, not I, not that i don't think you get that i don't think that's for normally i could be wrong i'd have to look that up um i think the display case was just for the the ones that have been sent out to people 
That's my point, though. You'd want you <laughs> look so nice, you'd quite happily put one in something like that with just some power running to it. And you'd be like, look at this cool card I have. Like, I'm not using it, but look at it. <laughs> <laughs> what about yourself, Gim? Oh. I'm hoping they had the sense to make twice as many of the Imperial ones as they did the Jedi ones. That's how they're going to sell. <laughs> yeah. I, I, you yeah, know, to be fair. I, you know why that is such a good point? It's because I mm. think NVIDIA, it's always green. Right, like mm. everything's green, 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 and there's gonna be this kind of reaction of holy shit, an NVIDIA card that's red? Oh, that's awesome. You know, regardless of the whole Jedi versus the Empire thing. Yeah. Um, I think just the color alone, but to be fair, when you get into it though, doing like, can you imagine like making a really sweet Vader themed or a Sith themed, a Darth mm. Maul, you know, Kylo Ren, you know, a kind of a Sith themed PC? Custom water loop, red fluid. I'm, uh, I'm that, not, not uh, gonna lie. I would, uh, I would love to put both of those cards next to each other in an SLI. <laughs> <laughs> One of <laughs> each. Twenty-four hundred dollars. You get, you get into stupid, uh, stupid specs then as well, aren't you? <laughs> not compatible for SLI. Oh, well, there you go. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, that's my idea. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, the clash between the red and the green look horrible. That, 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 that red and black one he has no taste. Looks so nice. <laughs> Cheek. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, thanks for that joke. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, it was a big. They'd announced there was going to be a collector's edition quite a while back. Um, but as you can imagine, whenever this was announced, that it was Star Wars themed ones. Um, Geeks, nerds, Star Wars fans all over the world just well, all let out just screeches and went crazy. Um, way to uh, way to sell to your target audience. <laughs> oh, it just I mean it was though. It just amazing um, it is. how people reacted positively. Um, oh, and yeah, that was started than that. Um, but yeah, it was quite amazing. And I watched today. Uh, there was two two big Destiny streamers over on Twitch. Um, and they each got sent one by NVIDIA, but one got the Empire, one got the Jedi, and they both unboxed them simultaneously on their own streams. Um, and, oh, it was just absolutely beautiful to watch. Um, and they're both running contests, but only open to residents of the US, unfortunately. God dang it. <sighs> one can dream. One can dream. But anyway, we, we've went... Over our hour because we're. Another bell. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We've been yapping away. Uh, thanks to everyone who turned out tonight. Of course, thank you so much to Gim Boyd and Sergeant Jay for being on the show this evening. It's a pleasure. Yeah. And, um, you know, if you're not watching us live, don't fret. It is every Thursday at 9 p.m. UK time, but you can always catch us on demand on YouTube, uh, my YouTube channel. Um, but also every Friday, uh, the video also goes live at scholarlygamers.com, which where you can find all sorts of other great articles, uh, reviews. Um, there's always something happening. Just today, the newest episode of armchair armchair gaming with little words armchair gaming was released today um where basically sheldon was looking into theology and religion tying it into destiny 2 um his last episode was also destiny 2 themed so give that a check out why don't you um but in the meantime we will uh do a little bit of gaming or something and we'll uh, we'll catch you again next week um thanks for watching Jeez. Yes, yes. <laughs>